Hey guys, this is Brian Gill from Gilware. Just wanting to uh, briefly talk about a really nasty uh, data loss situation that I just called. If I get this call about a crashed RAID 5 server 100 times, this is about as bad as it gets. Substantially worse than any kind of fire flood situation. Um, <clears throat> anyways, what's going on? Uh, an MSP of ours walked into a client's office. There was a server on premise that was basically vintage. It was something that they had before they acquired this client. So it's not the setup they would have recommended. But uh, what we're dealing with is they came in and two drives were dead. Normally when two drives are dead, one of them died historically and configuration was not set up to properly notify engineers to replace it. And then another drive dies like yesterday and everybody notices that the server's gone poof. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately then what they had done was they took the three healthy drives, put them in a new server and restored from their backups. Then they found out that their backups were incomplete due to a problem called configuration drift, where when they properly set up the backups in the first place, life was grand. Everything was being backed up. The clients had installed some new software packages, done some other things and did not notify the MSP of that new data's importance. The backup should have had the configuration tweaked, but you know, the configuration from original had drifted and the backup had not been drifted along with it. So um, they put about, they filled those new drives or the, the new array got filled up about two thirds. So it had about 1.8 terabytes out of, you know, roughly 2.5 ish terabytes. So anyways, uh, the original RAID 5 was five 600 gigabyte drives. Two of them were dead. One of them's probably stale. Let's just say 2015. The other one died yesterday. Um, and this is kind of what it looked like here. Um, so what I'm trying to show here in this very fancy uh, Excel spreadsheet that I just threw together, this is what uh, the data used to look like on the array. So, you know, data block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, left of all the way to like roughly 4 billion worth of sectors. Um, this being the first block in the array, this being the last block in the array. And any particular block, um, let's make an assumption that we can, if we can fix the two dead drives. Um, we're going to have essentially a 25 or 20% chance that any particular block is in one of these five buckets. Um, this is drive one, two, three, four, and five. I'm trying to represent the physical array here. So uh, this is actually where the raid starts. Um, <clears throat> data one, data two, data three, data four, and then if this was a RAID 0, this would be data 5, but it's not. Uh, we're running RAID 5, so every one of these locations is going to have at least one XOR location. So if data 4, if this drive 4 died, you could reconstitute data 4 by running parity math of 1 XOR 2, XOR 3, XOR the XOR block, and bang, out would spit data 4. Um, that's how RAID 5 works. Um, every drive and a drive perspective has 80% of his data is his data, unique data, and 20% of each original drive is going to have XOR, paired data, or pool data. So not meant this video to be how RAID 5 works, but there is the short synopsis. Um, so <clears throat> anything on drive 1, we're calling him the good drive because we fixed him and he's great now. Uh, so all his data is good. The data here is going to be either stale from 2015 which, if it was an old file, might be okay. Uh, or if, you know, data 2 is actually a block that has been changed since 2015, it's going to be bad. There is a 50%, there's a chance that we could run the parity math on these guys here that only have a 33% chance each to be good. So, theoretically, if you just look at the math, well, geez, we're going to have like a 1 in 27 chance that, that we're going to rerun parity from here, 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 and spit out good data here. But it's actually higher than that because data gets written in mass, it gets written in waves, and if this guy at like this location over here is in good shape, then chances are his brethren are okay too. Um, so the, the, the math might dip a little bit, but that's what we're going to see, is we're going to see the repeating pattern of, you know, good, maybe like a 40% chance we're good, maybe like a 33% chance we're good, um, 
and this pattern like this is just going to repeat over and over and over again. So anyways, um, that's the kind of binary situation. So what does that mean for recovery? Well, I, I did a bunch of math, and essentially we're going to have about a 46% chance of recovering anything small. Um, and something that's small is a master file table definition and we're going to have a 46% chance of any individual block being recoverable. So if you have a small file that was current, like the Word document you were just working on, a proposal for a client or something that was done in October of 2016, which, which we're, what we're going to have is roughly a 21% chance to recover that file. We're going to have a 46% chance at its definition, we're going to have a 46% chance at its binary, and we're going to have a roughly 1 out of 5 chance to recover that file. Um, if the file is older, we're going to have a slightly higher chance just because um, this 20, 2015 block turns into good if, if we're after an older file. <clears throat> the bigger a file gets, you know, this math is going to get worse. So um, essentially this is going to dip because as a file gets bigger, we need more of this to get lucky in these 33% chances. Yes, that we're going to have these waves of kind of greenfield territory where we're going to get something, but this is not going to be a 21% chance or a 26% chance. We're, uh, the bigger a file gets, the more complicated its definition is, the more binary runs we have to get lucky with, this is going to dip. Um, you know, roughly for a 10 megabyte file, I'd give us maybe a 10% chance to recover it um, with both the definition and all the binary. But it might be a little bit higher than that just because of the fact that we're going to have waves. But it's difficult to, to, to really dial that particular math in. Now, large gigabyte size plus heavily fragmented files, we're going to see this dip down to less than 1% chance. we got to get really, really lucky because as this definition starts to take up hundreds of thousands of binary runs and needs lots of sectors to put that in, we're flipping coins on every single one of those sectors. And same thing with its binary. As you have hundreds of thousands of run, you would have to win that coin flip 100,000 times for a file with 100,000 fragments. So the math is really bad and basically really isn't even worth talking about. So significantly sub 1%. So big, highly fragmented SQL Server database. Bye-bye. Uh, he is not going to be recoverable. Uh, in this particular situation. He might have a non-fragmented rolling backup file that gets created daily or weekly. And we might get super, super lucky because he's got a small definition. And he lives in contiguous space in one of these big stretches of unsmashed area. So, you know, it's there it depending on the situation we've definitely gotten lucky from time to time where hey you know the database is screwed but there's a back file that we found out in space that was untouched and here it is and maybe it's a month old and it's better than nothing right um, but the situation actually gets a little bit worse uh, this particular client uh, didn't just have the data just sitting on the on a physical array um, we have to talk a little bit <clears throat> about where this all comes from so there's a physical volume group, and then there's a logical unit, which basically takes the physical RAID 5 and presents it to something. In this case, it was presented to a basically an NTFS file system that was running a Windows server. That Windows server was running uh, Hyper-V, and there was a bunch of VHDX file definitions, or at least one. Uh, he may have had snapshots, he may not have snapshots. And then the actual user files lived within those virtual VHDX files. So our client's picture actually gets a little murkier. Uh, we actually have like a 46% chance at the uh, VM uh, <clears throat> or the VHDX file definition. If it was snapshotted, this math continues to get worse. And then all of these probabilities are going to impact these numbers and drive them south. So this is a really bad recovery. Um, if we got it in the building, which I have not necessarily like encouraged our clients to send it, um, we would get data off of it. It would require a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> we don't know this pattern when we get this gear. We would get these drives in. Our job is to look at the hexadecimal data and figure out these patterns. 
this is difficult when you've got good, stale, two-thirds chance in your analysis that you're looking at garbage. So this is really hard to put this together. It would probably take one of my better guys a couple days to really figure out what the old regime looked like. And then from there, it would take probably a couple more days of time to actually constitute whatever the optimal looking recovery would be. And it would cost many thousands of dollars and be a pretty crappy result. So I'm actually hoping this one doesn't come in the shop because we don't really like charging lots of money for crappy results. Um, so I've discouraged them from sending it. But uh, hopefully, you know, you learned a little bit about, you know, the recovery process and kind of what goes into it and uh, a little bit about how RAID 5 kind of works in general. Uh, what mistakes were made, uh, I went over this with the client, but obviously they should have had some sort of remote monitoring on the server. Um, it's not like always the IT guy's fault, though. I mean, what you always got to understand is the IT guy makes recommendations. I recommend we run this in my data center. Well, I don't want to because that costs money and I have it for free sitting here. Well, okay. You know, I recommend I you pay me 50 bucks a month to monitor this server. Nah, I'm okay. We keep an eye on it. You know, this is the type of thing you bump into a lot where the IT guy knows the best practices, but it doesn't happen. You know, we recommend that we use like a storage craft full volume backup on this thing so that we don't bump into configuration drift and that we take that storage craft snapshots and shove it up to the cloud in a cloud backup as well. So we've got two different areas where we have backups, you know, these are all the recommendations that good IT guys make, but those recommendations cost money and clients don't always want to pay money. So we end up in situations like this. So uh, anywho, uh, this again was Brian from Gilware. Uh, hopefully you got a little bit out of this video. Thanks.